So, uh, of the members who are actually on the committee, um, Councillor uh, Ernest is substituted, uh, uh, Councillor Maloney is substituted, uh, and Councillor Halati is substituted. But we have a quorum required. And thank you to those colleagues who have stepped in to the uh, to
do a complete valuation of those uh, those fire stations over a, over a, on a five year cycle. Uh, and then that, that, the next cycle of that is, is in the next financial year. What we've done is a piece of work um, with officers to make sure that we're happy that the carrying value doesn't differ materially if it has been valued this time in this year. Uh, I'm happy to say that we're able to get insurance in terms of that. What we do say in the report though is that there is a need after the full valuation is done to introduce a sort of more systematic process of getting that information. It's something that the accounting code is asking the party to be a little bit more um, we've discussed um, in previous years, um, particularly by the information last time, around the PFI scheme, and I know there's a report later on in your agenda in terms of that. Um, so in this year's accounts, the, the final three stations come into the accounts, so again, that's a, that's a big addition in the accounts. Um, and also in terms of where we're sitting today, there's also the, uh, the spend on the Joint Control Centre as well. Um, so that's another six million pound addition in the accounts this time. So, in terms of the audit, we said the work is all now completed. There were some sort of amendments to some of the disclosures that are in the accounts, but nothing that changes your reported financial position. I know there are no um, outstanding uh, errors or, 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 or uncertainties. So my intention will be to issue an unqualified opinion on the accounts, as long as you're happy to approve those and sign the letter of representation today. But then just turning to the other half of our audit, which is about the value for money conclusion. And as the chair's already referred to, it has been you know, the period I've been involved with the authority. Um, quite a challenging period in terms of how much money has come out of your, uh, your budget in that period and the steps you've had to take to try and address that um, without having an impact on, on service delivery. Um, in my view, the authority's got a really strong track record of rising to that challenge and of, of taking steps to make sure that you are able to live within your reduced resources. Um, and as you know, we've now reduced the number of parties from 42 to down to 28, and reduced also the number of firefighters as well, without any impact on the service delivery. So I think you've got a, a very good track record um, of dealing with those challenges. Clearly, as, um, as you know, that challenge is already going to continue over the next few years, and you'd like to take some more tough decisions going forward. Um, my view is, is that you're well placed to deal with those. Um, you've already shown and demonstrated a willingness to work collaboratively with partners, including the, the place where we're sitting now, and it's a very notable example of doing that. And I'm sure you'll have to continue to do that, both with other partners and perhaps with other fire services as well, going forward. Um, so my only one point I wanted to make around value for money is, is that I know that you are mindful, I know from what Kieran's advice in the past, that there is a challenge around the continuing affordability of the capital program and being mindful of that, and that's something that I've been addressing through your forward program, particularly around your plans for mergers of fire stations going forward. So, having looked at all what you're doing and based on your, your strong track record, I will again I'll be giving an unqualified conclusion, an unqualified money conclusion, confirming that the authority continues to have uh, appropriate arrangements for those to secure value. So finally, just very briefly, uh, just confirming what I'm asking you to do today. So I'm just asking you to note the findings from our audit as set out in this report. Note that the intention is to issue an unqualified opinion and an unqualified value for money conclusion. Um, I'd like to place on record my thanks to Kieran uh, and to Ian Simon and all the all their colleagues for their you know, their considerable cooperation throughout the audit. They you know, yet again provided us with excellent cooperation for the audit. Our record. Uh, and finally, just to reflect on the comments made earlier, as I said, this is my last uh, audit of the authority. Um, it has been, from my perspective, a privilege to work with you. Um, it's been, you know, at times we've had some, some interesting engagements, and Kieran and myself have always necessarily agreed on every single issue, but we've always had um, a very um, professional and constructive relationship. Um, and I'd like to express my thanks and, you know, said my, my privilege of having worked with you. I wish you were back in Questions from others?
or statement for accounts 13 and 14, authorisation for issue, pages 41 to 132. Kieran. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, an awful lot of information here, but I feel like Robin stole my thunder because obviously you, you know we've got a clean bill of health around the, the accounts, which is obviously very good news. Um, I, I won't lay the things, um, but uh, you've had the, the figures previously, but broadly speaking, the story of the year was that we, we, we got ahead of the game in terms of delivery savings uh, to the tune of about £2.3 million back out by the, the end of the year. Uh, but of, of that, about a million pounds related to projects and schemes that were spread over uh, more than one financial year. So we set aside money in the earmarked reserves uh, related to that, which meant there was a true understanding of about £1.3 million. Pounds. And I suppose, um, matching it back to the, the report from Robin, uh, that £1.3 million pounds put into the capital investment reserve um, to be available to fund the fire station mergers that we'll see in the future and to avoid borrowing. I think the, the only other matter I, I could bring to your attention, I suppose, in terms of the, uh, the final accounts, that you know, there's a lot of information in there, but just on page 62, uh, is the, the balance sheet. Uh, I suppose you know, we've got the national dispute about pensions. Why are we making changes to all the various pension schemes for all our staff? And it's very clear on the balance sheet there, and that um, on our balance sheet, we have a liability of much uh, far a billion pounds just on Merseyside, most of which relates to the department's pension schemes that have become funded. And clearly, you know, that exercising lines you know, at the, uh, the national level and it is in part for our year where we are in terms of the strike dispute. So I don't think it's always worth just reflecting on that when we look at the final accounts. Apart from that, I've got nothing else to say, Chair. Um, so what you're asked to do today is uh, to approve the accounts for, for issue and publication. And there's a second document attached, which is the letter of record which um, the chair of the committee and myself are asked to sign on behalf of the authority. And what that uh, in essence explains is that since we um, cast the accounts, that there have been no uh, material changes or uh, strange matters that have come to light, that we ought to have brought to the auditor's attention um, that there's material effect on financial expenses. And clearly, the letter says that there are no such matters. And uh, um, if, if you're agreeable, then the uh, chair will send us on behalf. Thank you so much. Well, the issue of uh, authorization of issue of the accounts is that agreed? And then uh, the second part is the letter of representation. Does anybody know, speaking now for a couple of weeks, does anybody know of any, uh, any material officers indicate there is not material? If so, is that agreed for our side? I think we need to collect it some of them. That's agreed. Okay, thank you. So that's item four on the agenda. Again, in the same vein, item five, the financial review, those are, those are historic reports, this is the current year report, the 8th of June. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Yes, this is leading to the current financial year. Just a, a very brief on the, yes, it's early days um, in the financial period, but again, what we're trying to do is get ahead of the game in terms of savings as far as possible, um, so that we're, we're in a comfortable place and you know, um, we minimize the use of reserves learn much about how we're using reserves to avoid redundancy and so on. Um, we want to try and maximise the, the use of our reserves and then do that juggling act between avoiding borrowing, avoiding fostering redundancy um, and, and, and keeping the, the reserves from the line. Um, the, at this stage in the year, it's a bit early to be reporting any variations in the, the revenue budget, um, but with, you know, there are, on the other hand, there are, there are no negative issues at the moment and we would expect to be reporting a more positive position as we move through the year and we start to identify what those areas where we are ahead of the game in terms of savings. Um, I suppose what, one issue just to bring to your attention is on page 157 of the report, which actually is a summary of all the savings targets we have as authority um, for the full spending review period. Um, what, the, what that table is telling you is that um, by the end of 2017-18, uh, we expect to have implemented over £25 million worth of savings in the And at the end of 2014-15, uh, our, our target um, was to set in place um, just about £20 million worth of savings. And that is all done far £564,000 worth. So we've made tremendous progress, which to relate back to the drawing that talked about actually you know, facing up to those different challenges and implementing so good news there, it gives an idea of the scale of change that we've faced over the last few years. Uh, 
Um, next thing to bring to your attention is that th th this report actually reflects the, the strategy we considered about the use of reserves. And on page uh, 170 of the report, it gives uh, a list of all our current reserves. And what, what this report formally does is effectively moves all our available monies into the capital investment reserve. What will we use the capital investment reserve? We use it to pay for fire station mergers. If we use that money to pay for fire station mergers, we're avoiding borrowing in the long term. Because obviously if you borrow money, there's a revenue implication of you paying that debt, which is what we want to avoid. So uh, you'll see there that there's a capital investment reserve which is up as high as 9.4 million pounds. And overall, in terms of uh, program for fire station mergers, we expect to see about 15 million pounds. We've applied to the transformation and efficiency fund for grants of four and a half million. Broadly speaking, we've got most of the capital of the world is covered um, if our fiscal transformation efficiency plan is successful for that year. Um, I think the only other point to bring your attention on, on, on this report is probably around capital management. And just to say at this stage of the year, we've received the, the pension fund grant uh, in advance, and so we are relatively cash rich. So at the end of the year, uh, June 2014, we had uh, 17.2 million pounds worth of investments. As ever, we split amongst uh, uh, low levels of uh, uh, risk investment, and we split across uh, a number of different agencies and banks and so on. So, to spread the risk as much as possible. Um, I think that's all I need to say on the capital team. Thank you very much. Well, we've got our strategy day uh, a few weeks ago, so the members know the more or less that the strategy of the There is no specific guidance about what the level of reserves should be. And so sometimes you hear from people who are looking for the five percent of the budget or whatever, but strictly speaking, there is no specific limit. Um, what you should do as an authority, and what would I advise you to do, is to look at all the risks and issues facing the organization. If you set your level of reserves based on the level of risks that you face, and the, so the things that might come out of will work for you to adversely affect your financial position. Or
Yeah. 